now we come to the main topic that is the senile cataract senile cataract means now with age we lose the transparency of our lens so if this lo loss of loss of transparency is coming with the age this is called a senile cataract sometimes they ask what are the reasons for pre senile cataract so reasons for pre senile cataract the most important reason is diabetes then you can get in patients of cigarette smoking congenital conditions like posterior polar cataracts sometimes due to some syndromes like myotonic dystrophy or atopic dermatitis or sometimes due to use of drugs like corticosteroids so these are the causes of pre senile cataract where there is a cataract formation in less than 45 years of age now we come back to our main topic that is the senile cataract why this senile cataract occurs first of all because the hydrating mechanisms they get impaired the second thing increase in the concentration of insoluble proteins few important stages that you have to remember are this would be important for the students of third year that first there is a stage of lamellar separation followed by incipient cataract followed by immature senile cataract followed by mature cataract and then a hyper mature cataract so first is stage of lamellar separation followed by incipient followed by immature senile followed by mature and followed by the hyper mature cataract now you have to remember what is hyper mature cataract now we come to the hyper mature cataract now this hyper mature cataract can be of two types one is a morgagnian cataract and other is a sclerotic cataract in morgagnian cataract after there is a mature senile cataract this nucleus becomes more heavy and it settles at the bottom and the material liquefies so nucleus becomes heavy and settles at the bottom in sclerotic cataract basically this nucleus shrinks it becomes so hard that it shrinks and there is a calcification of the capsule so this becomes a sclerotic cataract so now we would understand the concept of iris shadow now let's say this is the iris and this is the nuclear cataract the stage of immature senile cataract that is coming now when the light is there and it falls on the iris a shadow of iris is formed on the nuclear opacity so this is called iris shadow where the shadow of iris is formed on the opacity this is there in the immature senile cataract where there is a clear area 
between the anterior capsule and the opacity now let's say in a condition of mature cataract where there is a total opacity there is no free area here when there is no free area and there is a cataract all over the place there would be no iris shadow so in mature cataract or in hyper mature cataract there is no iris shadow so this is the concept of iris shadow which is seen in immature senile cataract or a nuclear cataract but not in a mature or a hyper mature cataract now we come to the clinical features of the cataract the first of all the important one is the blurring of vision the patient would say that okay doc sahab i am able to see but my vision quality is not good his color let's say when he see a white page he cannot see a white page like a white it would be a bit yellowish so this is called blurring of vision around the light he would see halos one important thing that you have to remember is a second sight phenomena what is second sight phenomena in the uh, conditions like immature senile cataract where there is a nuclear cataract normally what happens there is a near vision okay we call it a near point and there is a distance vision near point means that at the point where we can see clearly a near object and distant point means how far we can see an object clearly that is the far point normally what happens with the age when the, there is a press biopia the near point recedes so let's say if i am able to study a paper from let's say 30 cm distance but now i have to keep it afar let's say 45 cm distance this is called press biopia okay when nuclear cataract occurs this far point recedes let's say you are at a a uh, distance of 15 meters from me okay i can see you clearly slowly and slowly with the nuclear cataract now you i cannot see you at the 15 meter it becomes 5 meter 1 meter then 50 cm and then 30 cm so this far point recedes so much that the near it becomes your near point so now normally when i was not able to see at 45 years of age at a near distance but with the cataract maturing which comes to the nuclear sclerosis let's say grade 3 or grade 4 now i can read an object that is near to me so this improvement of near vision improvement of near vision with advancing cataract is called second sight phenomena one thing more that you have to remember is let's say our opacity is in the posterior subcapsular region this is my iris so whenever there is a bright light i i have told you that in bright light there is a pupillary constriction now the light goes and hits the opacity so in posterior subcapsular cataracts or in posterior polar cataracts the vision is bad in bright light or there is too much of glare oppositely let's say if the pupil is dilated in conditions of let's say you are in a cinema hall so now the light would go from the outside also and if the patient has cortical opacities so his vision would be more hampered so if they say if vision is bad in dim light then it can be due to cortical component hope you understand this phenomena
so friends uh, this is a cataract surgery going on so first of all we make a incision this is the corneal incision have you seen that the incision is made at the limbus now we make a paracentesis this blade is an MVR blade after this we would put viscoelastic to form the anterior chamber then uh, for an experienced surgeon uh, like Dr. Kamal Kapoor who is doing the surgery uh, we don't need to put stain inside the eye the, normally we use a tripan blue so here just we put the viscoelastic can you see the viscoelastic is put inside the eye and this makes basically the anterior chamber and then with the 26 gauge needle the next step that we do is a capsular axis this is a capsular axis that we are doing this is also called continuous curvilinear capsular axis can you see we are making a, a opening in the anterior capsule of the lens now we have completed the capsular axis we would put some visco and now we would do the hydro procedures these are the hydro dissection and hydro delineation by these procedures what we do is we separate the epicortex from the cortex and the different layers of the nucleus so that now we can rotate the nucleus and the cortex can you see here we are rotating the nucleus and the cortex and a ring is formed this is called golden ring now we have to do a phaco emulsification we have got a phaco emulsification probe inside and this probe basically sucks the nucleus and the cortical material first we have sucked the cortical material and now we would start a phaco another instrument that is inside the eye is a chopper now can you see here we are just sucking the uh, different parts of the nucleus and the cortex with this probe this white colored probe and now we have done the chop chop means to divide the nucleus into two or more parts okay can you see we have now divided it and now with our phaco emulsification probe slowly and slowly we are eating the nucleus and the cortical material can you see here this all the nucleus and the cortical material has been eaten by the phaco emulsification probe can you see here now we are going to the periphery and eating the epicortex that is just behind the capsule so in this way we are eating the part of the cataract so now when all the nucleus and uh, uh, the cortex is removed some uh, tags we remove with an irrigation and aspiration cannula now can you see the irrigation and aspiration cannula are now basically removing the parts of the uh, the tags of the cortex that are here and there so we have removed each and everything this step is called irrigation and aspiration now what we have to do is we have to put the intraocular lens so we stabilize the group and with an inserter we are putting a foldable intraocular lens can you see beautifully this intraocular lens has been put so this step is called insertion of intraocular lens very nicely this uh, lens which is a uh, Bosch and Block Invista lens we have put inside the eye and now we are removing the viscoelastic which is left so that uh, all the viscoelastic is being uh, removed by this irrigation and aspiration cannula because if viscoelastic remains there it can increase the pressure so viscoelastic has been put the lens is beautifully in the uh, bag now we would do the hydration of wound because in phaco emulsification we don't do any type of we don't put any suture uh, these sutures are put in the corneal wound in the surgeries of the ECC now we have put the uh, we have done the hydration and the cataract surgery is complete our next topic is phaco emulsification now it is procedure for choice of any type of cataract surgery okay so it is used in up to grade 3 grade 4 cataract but in some cases where there is a very hard cataract let's say a uh, phaco morphic glaucoma or a uh, morgagnon or sclerotic cataract only in those cases you now do a surgery where you use uh, sutures like SICS or ECC so the important point for phaco emulsification that you have to remember for exam point of view is that you use a corneal incision of almost 2.2 millimeter to 2.8 millimeter this incision is normally a triplanar incision which we make at the level of limbus okay 
so basically another important thing that it is a stitchless surgery you don't require any uh, suture in the cornea for this surgery uh, it has less endothelial damage as compared to the conventional surgeries like ECC or SICS we say that almost 10 percent is the uh, endothelial loss after a phaco emulsification surgery uh, and you put a foldable intraocular lens okay this foldable intraocular lens if they ask the material of choice the material of choice is now acrylic material and it can now basically go into a 2.2 millimeter or 2.8 millimeter incision inside and we put it at the level of patellar fossa after removing the uh, nucleus and the contract remember remember the anterior capsule now let's say this is the anterior capsule so anterior capsule we make a capsulotomy or an opening and posterior capsule remains the intact so we put an inter intraocular lens between the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule so only disadvantage of phaco emulsification is that it cannot be used in very high grade cataracts and second thing is that it has a costly equipment okay so uh, if they give you uh, this type of instrument picture remember this is a phaco emulsification probe this probe can you see here we are entering the eye in the nucleus so from to this probe we enter after the capsulotomy inside the nucleus and we chop it and then remove it okay it basically uses ultrasound energy and two names that you have to remember is dr charles kilman and dr richard headley so dr charles kilman is considered as father of phaco emulsification and dr headley is considered as father of intraocular lens so these are some important points that you have to remember regarding the phaco emulsification